What's going on everybody? It's your boy SB is the track star and welcome back to Dancehall Masterclass, chapter 3. And in our chapter we are going to focus on drums and just percussion and basically just pattern construction and how to approach that. Either whether you start your melodies or you start your rhythms by making the, the drums first or whether you start the melodies by making the, the, the melodies first. You know what I mean? Or your, your rhythms by making the drums first or by making the melodies first. So me, typically 99.99% of the time, I always start with my melody and then me make my drums follow what the melody ever go on. But there are people out there who start with the drums first and then them come with the melody, right? I cannot work like that. It's just not in me. But for the sake of doing it for the video, we don't, we don't make that happen, right? So cool. So we don't just kind of go over some basic things we need to understand about working inside of FL Studio and other DAWs in general. More than likely, every other DAW go have them same feature here. You understand the master? Because at the end of the day, them have to kind of have the same similarities because that music is just music. And if we use a sample in a FL, more and carry the same sample, they go use it in a Logic or Ableton or Bitwig or anything. You understand what I say? So, we are going to jump into that. So, the first thing what we are going to do is we do grab, you know, just some samples, some basic samples and, 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 and begin to work. So, let's get into it. All right, cool. So, let's go into, like I said, we are focused upon or we'll use the free kits that mama put out. So, we'll use the dance hall and that volume two. And we'll just grab, just kick seven. Also, do grab snare twenty one and I'll grab some perk. Cool. Let's also grab two claps. Cool. And for right now, we leave off the 808. We spend a chapter on bass and 808. So we have everything cool. So let's press F12, close all of the windows. So we have a kick, snare, three perk, two clap. Now we need, let's get an open hi hat and let's get. A close eye hat. Boom. So, what we want to dive into and what we want we forget the understanding of is different techniques how you can create grooves, right? So, in a dance hall, the basic groove is like what me describe as a 3-3-2, three, three, right? So, basically, if you start at the first note, then the next note, do come three notes after that. So, you have one, two, three. And then the next note, there'll come three notes after that. So one, two, three again. And then the next note is two after that, right? So we have this. And this is basically dance hall from way back in the day was still a continue in a modern dance hall. Let's change your tempo. So we'll go 100 BPM. You know what I mean? If you layer that up with the snare, playing the same exact pattern, we have the same exact, you know, modern, well, I more that's a retro sound from back in the day, you know, the modern world. Cool. So, that's basic dancehall pattern. Very easy. Simple. So, there are a few factors that can go into, um, you know, stuff being out of work, basically. Let's say you have a, a you have a, a kick drum and, you know, let's pick a let's pick a, a, a less thick kick drum. So something like this. So let's go new channel. So we can turn off this a kick you now. So we have a new kick, and it it not as thick, it not as heavy as the other one. So you might say, you know what, let me lay up that kick there with something else. So you go get another kick, and you lay up the two of them together. So instead of this, now you have this. You know, which is much thicker, much heavier. But one thing where you can come into, especially when you're layering up sounds, kicks specifically, is a thing what we call phase, right? So when you have this a kicker right here, so and if you do this and for kind of explain it or more explain it, we have to go get the kick them 
both of them. So okay, kick three first. I'll just do audio clip. I want to put um, kick twelve right here. Audio clip. Boom. So let me say, I think where you can come into our issue where you can have is this thing what we call ears. So let's make these bigger. And then let's stretch these out so we can take a look. Now, typically I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to show you a setting. So if you want to be able to zoom in to a like kind of a microscopic level, all you need to do is go into project and this thing was set PPQ, it can increase it. Right? No, let, let me be very clear. I'm only doing this because I am explaining something. So if I were like just working normally, I would leave it at 96. Because if you change that, you can alter the sound of your waveform. Because basically now you're, you're, you're adjusting stuff that have shit to do with the project. You understand? You don't want to ever mess with nothing you have to do with your project. But no, your sister, we can zoom in a lot farther in. I know we can take a better look at exactly what's going on. So we don't kind of can explain certain relationships between a thing what we call frequency and like I say, fears. So you need to kind of understand that because sometimes you will lay up a sound and say, hold on, but we lay up the sound, but the sound them not really knock as hard as them supposed to knock. So that is exactly what I'm going to explain right now. So, all right, cool. So basically, when it comes to fears, the thing you understand is that a waveform will travel at a certain amount of seconds or a certain amount of cycles. Every one of them, you know, loops, yeah, is a cycle, basically. So a full cycle would be from here to here, you know what I mean? From the halfway to the halfway. But we're not really, we're not getting into the technicalities. What you need to understand is that if you ever layer up two kick, like if we, let's loop out one nice little piece so we can get a, a good playback. So we lay up them two kicker, right? So let's turn off the top one. And put in the second one. Cool. We now really have any issues, you know, them, them fit, them kind of fit in, but that, that won't always be the case, right? So if I kind of explain what I, what I get to, is if we take this kick and we know basically Let's flip or reverse the polarity. Notice that we have a totally different sound. And sometimes that can already be the case. In this situation, everything was already how it was kind of supposed to be. No, it's still a little bit on the slower side, like everything really line up. But the thing with fears is that unless it's the exact same kick, you know what I mean? It won't ever be lined up exactly the same. So you can get away with that. But basically, as long as the waveform, they kind of travel in the same direction, then you're good. So if you kind of exaggerate on that, if I turn off this and duplicate this, so let's make this unique. If me now flip the polarity upon this, you shouldn't hear a sound. And it's not to say that the kick now I'm play. It's because the kick I cancel out because it's out of polarity, not out of fears. Polarity is basically the direction of the waveform. So basically, this is totally opposite. So therefore, not now I'm playing. But on the other hand, if the two of them are got the same direction and are the same sound and everything line up and them perfectly in fears, you get a louder signal. So this are just one kick. And then these are the two kick. You know, so now you get a lot of signal, which is to explain why when we put in a different kick, one or have a different, you know, like distance, like a phase, we call it phase distance or polarity, you know, distance to time. Because this a kick, I remember I said shorter. You know? Remember I said this a kick is shorter than the kick up on the top. So now we have two different kick where they go in at the same direction, but they have different um, phase characteristics, basically. The waveform no match exactly the same as the, the, the first kick. So we don't get a different sound. We're not going to get a, like a fully just louder sound. We don't get a whole different sound because the waveform them know them are overlap. You understand what I'm saying? But 
at the end of the day, the thing is, they might overlap, but they might travel in the same direction. So basically, they might not be fully lined up or in tune, but they still are going in the same direction, so they go benefit from that. You understand what I'm saying? You'll get a more, a louder sound and a different character, but you're not going to really get nothing nasty like if we flip the polarity. So we'll play it with, with the two of them layered over each other. And now we don't flip the polarity and you're going to notice that it don't get louder, but it don't get nasty. And at the same time, what just happened? We lose all of the body because them out of face. So if you ever lay up a kick and then I wonder what the fuck go on, that is exactly what is happening. You understand what I say? So just to kind of go over that again, if you want to lay up sounds, no. Every time me add a kick and me add another kick, me not have to come in there so and look on this. Remember, this is just for showing, but more you understand, so when you lay up sound, when you lay up two kick or two clap or two snare, you have to kind of take that into consideration. So, you know, if you ever do it and you say, oh, the fuck me lose all of the body out of my kick, just know so you can flip the phase or flip the polarity, you know, or you can check your phase. Most, like EQ, like... If we send both of them to channel, let's say channel one and channel two. A lot of times, the VSTs will have a phase switch to this. When we go by, it's a swap left and right. But that don't really make a difference. All that I do is basically I take the left channel and put it on the right and take the right channel and put it on the left. That's totally different. This thing right here is a reverse polarity. That make a difference. A lot of times the DAW will include that. But 90% of all EQs, especially parametric EQs, will have a phase switch. So in this situation, we don't use the Fab Filter Pro Q3 because we know exactly which part it there. So in the Fab Filter, you come here, click this, and you have a phase switch right here or a polarity switch. But this is a phase invert. Basically, it invert the signal. Not the same exact effect, just like doing it on the channel itself. You know, just doing it on the channel itself just save you the trouble of actually loading a VST. You understand? So, just one kind of get that out of the way. You need to understand fears. So, if problems ever arise, you can fix them. So, until next time, it's your boy, it's Bees the Truck Star. Peace.